Welcome to today's 3D print. I'm going to try recording this with my Osmo Pocket and see how it comes out. We'll see how the audio works for this. Um, today we're going to talk about some of the prints I've been making on my Artillery Sidewinder and the new filament boxes that I got from MakerBox and Alien 3D. So stay tuned. <music> So I got my maker boxes in my filament boxes. First up is my maker box. What do we get today? We get some Haribo Gold Bears, a Snow Lab sticker, a maker box 2019 magnet calendar, a Chris's basement sticker and business card, and a little pamphlet describing some of the options. Available. They have the regular box, which is um, four filaments, and they also have the new Explorer pack, which is um, all of the filaments. There's like seven or eight of them, and they also have the Easy box, which only includes easy to print filaments, so you won't get things like um, that require higher temperatures or hardened nozzles, etc. Uh, looks like a little advertisement for eSun about some of their filaments. And whatnot. I can't wait until their silk filaments are available in the US. So what did we get today? I actually printed with a couple of these. And um, by the way, the amount they give you is pretty precise. I came up with a new test nose cone that I use now for my filament samples. Um, this one's designed to take 15 meters of filament. And since we typically get 16 meter samples, I can print this nose cone with that. Um, I can print a larger nose cone if um, the filament doesn't soften at a low glass transition temperature because then I don't need the infill here. This infill is required as both a place to attach the shock cord and to give the nose cone structural integrity so it doesn't soften and warp so easily in a hot car. So first up is this awesome filament from eSun, their Magenta PETG. As you can see, I've only got one meter left because I printed this nose cone. It looks a little bit orange on my screen to me, but it's actually more like a watermelon red color, magenta. And I'm betting this will fluoresce. This is interesting. Because this is PETG, I was able to do it completely hollow, which meant I can make a larger nose cone. Then the one I'm really excited about is from ColorFab, their copper fill filament. This one excites me because this one is polishable. So this thing is like stupid heavy too. So I made that nose cone with it. And you see, I started polishing it with steel wool. So this is gonna have a nice copper shine to it when I'm done polishing it. This is gonna be fun. Then the other two I haven't played with yet. We have Push Plastics um, Mint PLA, which I like. And then Snow Labs Carbon Fiber PC Plus. Ooh, so that's polycarbonate and carbon fiber. I wonder if I can get away with putting that small an amount through a nozzle without hurting it. Because it'd be interesting to try this on the Flash Forge Guider too. That'd be interesting. So that's it for this month's Maker Box. I will, of course, eat my yum yums later. Next up is the Alien 3D UFO box. That's this one here. Uh, nice box. I love the fact, I hope it continues with this trend of doing themed boxes every month. A little bit of a cut there. I had to make sure I did not show my address. <laughs> um, New Year's theme. I hope you continue. This thing is stuffed when i say this thing is stuffed you have no idea i mean it, the, the box is actually bulging okay so of course you have your pamphlet which i love i hope it continues that as well so that's the pamphlet that says what's inside let's go over the filaments first i think there's six in here so this is an unreleased navy blue pla pro select from filament one that could be interesting. 
is this coming out dark or is that just the angle? I think it's just the angle. I think it's coming out okay. And then we have filament one glint silver. They're silver glint, they're glitter gray color. I actually do have something printed with that. I have a roll. This is my nose cone with the 1.2 millimeter nozzle, which came out exceptionally nice. This is printed on the artillery sidewinder. And we have 3D Prints Limited, their crystal green PLA that looks like a translucent green PLA. From US Monofilaments, it's a yellow high heat grade PLA, so it's annealable between 80 and 130 degrees Celsius, so you can anneal this. When you anneal annealable PLAs, you can anneal any PLA, but some work better. Uh, they become more resistant to heat, and they become a little stronger, but also more brittle. But the heat resistance is the big thing, so if you anneal PLA, you can leave it in your car, or put it in a dishwasher, and it won't hurt it. Um, Fiberology Onyx Easy PLA, so that's a black PLA, Onyx. And then, this one looks interesting. So yes, there is six. This is from Stro 3D. Looks like Strong Hero, maybe? Yes, Strong Hero 3D. Translucent Yellow PETG. So I'm going to have to print the nose out of that. That looks interesting. Now, the box is still full of stuff. <laughs> so, jumper cables, USB cable. A LCD screen module unit. A breadboard, sort of a breadboard. A, I believe this is, I want to say it's temperature and um, humidity sensor. And an Arduino Nano. All that came with this. <laughs> So it comes with an Arduino Nano and all the parts needed to make your own hygrometer, your own humidity sensor. So you could put this in your filament box to see how much humidity is in your filament box to make sure it's actually a dry box. That's freaking cool. I'm, I'm going to build this one because I think it's going to be fun. Bonus, you also get a Micro Swiss 0.4 millimeter, 1.75 millimeter hardened A2 steel nozzle. That's like 15 bucks right there. <laughs> that's part of the box. I mean, that's awesome. You also get stickers. Micro Swiss. They make an all-metal hot end for the Creality printers. That's also very nice. It's nice because um, it's bolt-in replacement. It's designed the same shape and bolt pattern as the Creality hot end. So you can just bolt it right into your printer. You don't have to print anything or modify anything. Um, looks like premium pro select sticker from filament one looks like micro swiss coupon card and 3d gloop coupon card and a country club from country 3d sticker that's awesome that's a lot of stuff in that box so that's my filament boxes for the month I want to show you some of the prints. You already saw the PETG nose cone that I made using the um, sample filament from the box. And you saw the copper fill and the glitter silver from filament one. This is all on the Artillery 3D Sidewinder, which I'm really enjoying. It's got nice hardware and it's got a volcano hot end, so I already have a 1.2 millimeter nozzle on it. You can see how thick the extrusions are. That is a single extrusion. That's nice. I have some gold silk PLA. This is, who's this from? I want to say CC3D, I think. I got it on Amazon. What I haven't figured out is why I get the two different colors yet. It has to be a speed temperature thing, but it's nice. It's more of like a, a yellow gold. It's not quite as silky shiny as some other filaments, but it's still pretty nice. Then you saw the little sample. This is my new 16 meter 
15 meters, but designed to be printed with a 16 meter sample. So this takes 15 meters of filament. And this is a new filament that I found on eBay. I'll have a link down below for this. This is really gorgeous. <laughs> it's like a, a, a champagne. Let me show you another print. This is my normal full-size nose cone. You can see the printer is doing a fantastic job with this. I've modified my design to have two perimeters on the bottom section here, which avoids this issue of the seam here because of when it starts and stops. So by having two perimeters, I get rid of that problem. And now I have a really nice finish on the nose cone all the way around. Then it switches to phase mode to print this portion and then I switch to infill and then two perimeters the infill supports the two perimeters to complete the top of the nose cone so I get a really nice clean top to that nose cone versus the sometimes not quite as clean tops you get when you have no infill in there so that is the final version of my G code for my nose cones this is coming out beautifully this filament is amazing it's like a um it's like a, a champagne gold color with sparkles in it. So it's slightly transparent. You can you can see through it. So you can see my hand there. And um, so it's like a transparent goldish champagne color with glitter. And I want to say it's green or silver glitter or maybe even gold glitter. I don't know, but it's stunning. I also did one of my vases. This also printed on the Sidewinder. I am thoroughly impressed with the results. Beautiful, beautiful print. I'm printing on the glass bed with glue stick. I'm just having trouble getting prints to stick consistently to the glass. And I think that's mostly due to me printing with these filled filaments. I think a regular PLA would work fine, but because I'm using all these glitter filaments and copper filaments and stuff like that, I think that's why I'm having some adhesion problems. But this came out. I'm so pleased by this. It's one of the nicest ones I've printed yet. I mean, this is comparable to what I'm getting on my Ender 3. I'm very, very happy with that. And I did it twice. It's reproducible. I get the exact same beautiful results both times. I have no idea why the one looks darker. Because it's on the bottom, that's why. <laughs> now this one looks darker. There you go. Now they look the same. But beautiful, beautiful filament. And it's only, it's only like $15 a kilogram. and stuff is cheap. And that's shipped from the U.S. on eBay. I wish they'd put it on Amazon. I would love for this to be on Amazon. But I'll have a link down below for the eBay for this. And they say they're going to try to get larger rolls of this. Because I'd really like to get some 2 or 3 kilogram rolls of this. And um, I guess I can show you my failed fill bin print. <laughs> you get a kick out of this. <laughs> yeah, he's even got these growths coming out the side. Look how stiff they are. <laughs> so that's a pretty epic failure. Um, what I suspect was happening with this, and I don't think it's the printer's fault. I don't think there's much you can do about it. Well, it kind of is the printer's fault. It's a cooling issue. Because I'm extruding 1.2 millimeters of plastic and I'm doing it pretty quickly, this would have finished in just over nine hours and taken um, 850 grams of plastic. That's a lot of plastic very quickly. And um, I think the heat retention was too high and the cooling on the printer is insufficient for this much extruded plastic. When I slow down to 30 millimeters per second, it's fine. I have no problems with the extrusion. But I also had the same problem with the nose cones. If I went too fast, when it, for example, when it would get to an infill section here where it, it draws an infill line and then goes around and comes back down to the next line like this, well, this curved part here would start to curl up a little bit and the nozzle would start to crash into it when it came around to do the next layer of infill. When I slowed down, it wasn't a problem. So I suspect slowing down gave the fan more time to cool the plastic. So what I need to do is I need to upgrade the cooling on the printer to account for what I'm doing. With the stock 0.4 millimeter nozzle it comes with, you won't encounter this problem. Although I did have a slight cooling inadequacy on the back side of the print. So I want to design a double header. They sent me the STL file 
for the cooling duct that they use on this printer. So what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to split this and make my own little cobra head so the air will come from both sides. I think the fan puts out enough air. I just think it's not, it's not, it needs to be around the entire printed part. It's a 40 millimeter blower, 40 by 20 blower. So it's plenty, I think it's got plenty of horsepower. So that's something I'm going to be working on. And um, we shall see what happens with that. But it'll be fun. I will reprint this again once I get some more of this filament because I want to make my big golden um, fill, fill bin. If you haven't seen fill bin, it will look like this. And it, it's basically the filament um, matter hackers um, mascot, except he has an openable visor. So you can open his visor and he's hollow inside. I would love to eventually print like a one and a half meter tall version of this so I can put an actual trash bag in it and use it as like a little kitchen trash can. I just think that'd be awesome. <laughs> I think one problem with this setup is that the screen is down here but the camera's up here and I tend to be looking at the screen to check for framing which means my eyes look like this to you instead of my eyes looking at the camera. So I gotta figure something out with that when I really need the remote control. I gotta see if the remote will work in the Nemo app. But um, yeah, he's pretty cool. And I've also printed itty bitty tiny ones of him too, as small as 24 millimeters tall with the other five. So more on that later. And if you wanna see some sample prints from the Sidewinder, here's a couple samples that I printed with the 0.4 millimeter nozzle. So that's what you get with the stock 0 0.4 millimeter nozzle. Not bad. And that autofocus is not working. It is not liking it. I don't think I'm too close. I think it's just locking onto my face and so it's trying to focus my face. But I'll have pictures on Twitter of these. But um, if you want Philbin, you gotta find someone who has it and you gotta ask for it because it's not publicly available. It's an interesting social experiment that Bugman 140 is trying out. I think it's pretty cool. So that's it. I will see you guys on the Wednesday live stream as we do the Alpha Wise U30 this week. And let me know what you think of the audio quality of this. Um, they do eventually have a mic adapter coming for this camera, but right now it's just the built in mics. So let me know what you think of it video quality. Um, audio quality, etc. And I will see you guys later. Have a great day.